and how it runs and how to analyze it. It's a little bit different than Growth Model 1, um, but basically the same. So we're going to set up, in this case, um, uh, we're going to change so species 3 is now going to eat species 1. We're going to put in a growth rate of 100 so that this means that every time, every tick, um, there'll be 100 uh, patches added of species 1. We're going to put this initial number 1. We don't need the probability to reproduce anymore. We're going to put every time a species 1, a species 3 eats a species 1, it's going to get 5 units of energy and it's going to take 50 units of energy before it reproduces. All the rest of these are zero. So let's set it up and, and we're going to run this one for some someplace 2,000, 3,000 time steps just so that uh, we can see it, um, what happens. Uh, we can see what, what's going on. So we get set up. Let me run go. So one thing you'll notice differently this time is that it runs, instead of exploding out into being completely covered with orange bugs, the population levels off um, at some point. So it grows fast um, as it did before, but then there's a level off. So let's, let's just run it again just to see what happens the second time and get a very similar type of situation. So we ran this for about 2,000 time steps. Um, and you can see that it ends up leveling off. Um, if we look at the numbers around here, it basically, you know, an average over this time period is probably in the range of 850 or so. It looks like our end value was 918. Um, and so it's someplace, you know, between 850 and 900. Um, you can see that this thing levels off at around 400 or so time steps. It, it ticks. Um, so we're going to look at the, the initial growth pattern at that first 400. Um, and then we'll, um, and that's what we're going to sort of look at and compare it to our, our growth model one values. So let's open up our output file and the one thing because we've been there before we could have gone just to the open up the reasons but we'll cruise down and get our find our species growth um, there we are let's open this up and once again you'll see that we've got a file and this one's a little bit different than the one we looked at before because well, one, it's a lot, it's a lot longer. So we got 2,000 rows rather than 50 rows. But you'll notice that it's it takes a long, it's a lot slower growing than the other one was. So basically, it doesn't the first um, reproductive event doesn't take place until time step 43, um, and so it. It's a much slower growing uh, model. So the one thing we can do first that I think we'll do is um, we'll get we'll look at how good our our average was or prediction of what what the where it levels off, and that's the carrying capacity of the population. So let's go to let's say about time step 500, and we'll select everything from 500 on. Um, that'll just give us a pretty good estimate of when it starts to level off and do that kind of stuff. So we can hit our shift button and just cruise all the way down to the bottom. And if we select all those and we can just subset that part of it, uh, our selected rows. Now we can um, just do a quick distribution on N3 and now Oops, we didn't, we screwed that up, didn't we? Okay, make, make sure we're looking at this one. Um, it was still on the old one. Um, let's go back and look at our distribution again. And in three. Now, there we go. So 
what it should look like. So what we find is that the average is about 851, the median is 848. So it looks like someplace around 850. So we weren't too bad in terms of our estimate there of about 850 as the carrying capacity. So let's go back to our original file. What we're going to be interested here, though, in this time is just, um, and because there's so little change over time, we're going to get a lot of zeros. So what we're, and what we're going to be interested in is looking at longer periods rather than our short time step. We're going to do D and DT over longer periods. So what we're going to do is use the, you can use the command key on your um, keyboard if you hold that down. Um, then we're going to scroll down and we're going to let go to front at zero and we're going to save um, 50, uh, 150, 200, 250, and 400. Okay, so if we just now if we go and subset that little section of where we are, selected rows, all columns, hit OK. We can, um, if we want to, get rid of these columns we're not interested in. So now we've got um, a, a much smaller subset. Look at that. We'll do the same thing. So this is going to be our NT, N3N, and we're going to do, let's make this one N3 start. Um, and then this column will make our DNDT column. And then we'll do one more column for R. So now we can do the same thing we did before. We'll lag this column. So we're going to go to our formula. We'll get a lag in three. OK. Then we're going to put in our formula here. Oops. Formula. Start and now we've got, instead of having a time step of one like we did last time, we're gonna we have a time step. Our time step is 50, so we're gonna divide by 50. Now we've got estimates of D and DT um, here over time, and you'll notice that um, they start small, get get bigger, and then get smaller again. Um, so let's look at um, let's do it our a graph of that. Um, of, so if we look at that versus this, um, what we end up with is something that looks um, like this. It's a hump shaped distribution. So rather than being um, flat or like in it was for growth model one, where it was a straight, it was linear and increasing, this one basically goes up and then back down again. Um, and it starts at zero, and it's going to end at some value about 900 or so over here, um, which is very similar to where our carrying capacity. So that's basically the, the distribution runs. So we expect that, obviously, at some population size, uh, halfway, approximately halfway in between um, zero and the carrying capacity is where um, the growth the, it, the growth is maximized. Um, and so we can fit, uh, uh, probably the best line we can get is to fit a polynomial a quadratic. And that's, it's got a decent fit to it. You get an R squared of 0.82. Um, it's a little bit skewed maybe, um, but it's, it's not a bad um, fit to it. You can use um, our this sort of thing to look at where it crosses at zero. So let's see where zero is. So 
someplace around there, and it looks like zero is about. Let's see what cross is at. Someplace at about 900, a little bit over 900 is about where zero is um, on there. Um, so that's not that far off of where 850 is. It's going to be maximized at some place around 433, which is somewhere around half of, of that. So half of that would be nine, uh, you know, nine, half of 900 would be 400, 455 or something like that. So that's about in the same spot. Um, so anyway, that's um, what we get. Um, we can also then look at um, an estimate of R, and we can um, do that in the same way we did before. So remember that dn dt divided by n is going to give us R, and we get the values of R here. And if we look at that, we can graph that. Um, let's look at R versus N and K. You get a sort of a strange um, looking curve. It's probably going to be some sort of um, slightly um, a linear fit's probably not a particularly good fit to this one. Um, one of the things that that seems to fit pretty well is if, if you log R, you get a decent, um, it's not a bad fit, you get an R square of 0.86, um, which is not, not bad, it seems to fit relatively well. You get a fairly low and then it goes up. Um, and that's fairly typical of certain, of most natural populations where if there's not very many individuals there, um, there can be things that, that go on. But so it's, it, it's going to be somewhat, but you can see that it, it's declining with, with time. So as n increases, um, r decreases. Um, and everyone's going to, um, er, different runs are going to look uh, a little bit different on this. Um, so a case, so a couple things um, that are um, important there. Um, and that's basically how to analyze and look at um, population two. So, uh, and compare the two.